So, Chester, maybe you can say something about the <laughs> famous <laughs> show at the Apollo. <laughs> what's about what's the Apollo actually? Most people I think I, don't know about the Apollo. The Apollo Theater, of course, the Apollo Theater is one of the number number one entertaining place on the I can say the planet for entertainment. If you're not a great singer, dancer, musician, I mean, they will boo you off the stage. If your first note you sing ain't right, they're going to boo you off the stage. If your first step, that's wrong, they boo you off the stage. You got to be on top of it. And they were very cruel to you. But the Apollo, when we said that we were doing the, um, Frankie 100, oh man, I, all swing of it. I mean, I felt very privileged to, uh, I, I winded up first going in there as being, let's say, I was going to the show just to watch. <laughs> they said, would you MC? I said, okay, I, I was going to the show anyway. <laughs> then they said, oh, okay. Oh, I said, well, what do you want me to got a script? No, we don't have a script. Oh, well, who you have on the show? Oh, we're still putting together. I said, well, you know, a show of this magnitude, over 100 years of swing, you got to pull in the best people. So I said, no. Pull these people in. So I wrote the script in five days, got in there, and I said, this is who you need in the show. Boom. I, probably, I named almost everybody on the planet <laughs> that is great Lindy Hoppers. And these are the ones that Frankie worked with, because we, we are here to represent the world of swing. And so I said, man, you got to have this. You got to have Marcus. You got to have uh, Angela. You got to have, all, I mean, everybody. Half at this time, everybody was all over. I said, no, write a letter. And, they, and they did that time, they never had a direct, director. So I winded up being the director. <laughs> so I was the right director, stage designer, music arrangement, put the band together. Uh, and then by the time everybody found out the word Frankie's 100, every band wanted to get into it. And everybody was fighting to get in the band. They said, which band are you going to choose? Which band are you want to choose? Which band are you going to choose? I said, hmm, got an idea. I went, went to New York City, came to New York City real quick. I grabbed a band member out of each person's band. <laughs> You're going to play first trumpet. You're playing second. You press alto. Then I pulled. I had a young bass player. I, I ran into, I heard him. And I said, this guy's really good. He was 17 years old. And he could read. I said, I want you. What? You heard about the Frankie show? Yeah, I'm going to go see it. No, you're going to play in it. What? <laughs> He said, I said, yes, you're going to be in it. Come to find out, the kid was so excited, he ran home. Oh! Told his father, and he's, his father was a musician too, and he came back and said, Dad, Dad, you know that big old show, the, the swing show, the Frankie Manny show? Yes. Oh, I'm going to be playing bass in it. He said, what? Yeah, this skinny weasel guy came up to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then he said, what's this weasel guy? Yeah, his name was... Um, Something not Chester. He said, wait a minute. Chester? Chester Whitmore? He said, yeah. Wait a minute. That's the guy that gave me my first job. <laughs> <laughs> and it comes right up. That's, his father uh, worked with the Smithsonian Institution. I got him the job. And then we did the Duke Gallagher show. So it was like full circle. That had a 22-year-old that, that played guitar like B.B. King. And uh, so I said, I had to get, I said, get sugar. Get Barbara. Oh yeah, they're gonna it represent. So I broke the show into segments of Frankie's life, who he knew, singers, band, and all the way to the present time of what we call the resurgence of swing that we are uh, uh, for. Now we're going into the next millennium where you guys are at. So I said we're gonna put this show together, and it's gotta be done like a legit old show. Not none of this new stuff. None of this other stuff. It's going to be like a, a variety, segues. Half the people say, what's the segue? Oh, you learn what it is. <laughs> you learn what it is. I mean, one number after the next. Bang, boom, ba, 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 that next singer. Now you're on, boom, ba, 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 ba. And then everybody said, what you want me to do? I oh, don't worry about it. I know you can handle it. Yeah. Just be there. Yeah. yeah. And That's I, his favorite. Right? You're a professional. Yeah. <laughs> we were worried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. nobody's seen everybody's act. Yeah, that was the tricky part. They just knew he told me to be here. 
I'm here. At first, I couldn't believe Leonard came and everybody else came. I said, okay, this is what's going to And we had two days to pull it off. We had a cast of 325 people. And the chorus girls and Frank, but we pulled it off, Mabel Lee, and it was great because it was showing the legends that were um, there that was teaching, that you had a new legend. I had a section called the classic sergeant. The classic sergeant is the people that the legends taught the other people, and now they're the masters of right now in teaching the new generation. And I always say, you got to seek out uh, the people that have this type of knowledge so you can get close to the source. We all want to get close to the source. You know, it's, I, I like seeing new, new things and innovative things. Get close to the source so you can understand what it is. This is Marcus, Jokes, uh, all these people. These are people that have been trained by these masters. And so when you're around them, they're gathered now, they're gathered, and they're putting it into exercise. That's another thing I learned by, well, the people that I learned from, mastery, you know, the people that I learned from is to, my motto is experience it, learn it, train in it, perform it, master it, and then pass it on. That's what you got to do. Let me tell you something about that show. <laughs> it was a two hour show. We did it twice on Wednesday. Wednesday night, two hour show. That was four hours. And it was standing room only. The place was packed. And every number got a standing ovation. Okay. Every number, every number, two hours. Yeah, we just watched some pictures uh, a few weeks ago where we shot having Chester in it. <laughs> the funny pictures we made. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think Bebel pulled, pulled you up and you were Oh, here. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> girl. yeah. Um, so this was kind of for Frankie 100, so yes. it's kind of kind of nowadays. Yeah. So, but just uh, what did you bring into the world of swing? Well, yeah, I got one. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> the world of swing. What I brought into, I um, uh, first of all, um, I had to admit um, I was experienced into the world of swing. I always loved it. Uh, me being a dancer, I was not expecting, like, like Barbara would say, I was never expecting me as being a dancer. I would never call myself a dancer. I fell into it. I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> I'm a, I do films, I write, I story tell, I make things up and pull stuff, you know. But my whole life has been like that, you know, even, you know. Go. But when I got into filmmaking, that led me into dancing. And in order to be a filmmaker, you had to tell stories and you had to learn anything from murder mysteries, sci-fi stuff, but you had to learn documentaries, how to tell a story. I had a um, great instructor named Hugh McKay, filmmaker. I, this is at the age of 11. I was a film editor at 11. But when I got into my teens, we had a, um, uh, a what's that, uh, documentary on the Philadelphia Ballet Company. And that's what I got introduced to the world of dance. Now, I always loved movies, and I always loved old musicals, the Fred Astaire and all the great old movies. You see them, I don't know, it was always puzzled me. They said something like, did you know this thing? And all of a sudden they go, there's some enchanted evening. They, they just break onto a song or just break out into some kind of dance. I said, God, how do everybody know how to do that? <laughs> so I had to I work on this dance, and the guy, ballet guy said, have you ever tried dancing? I said, I clowned around in it. You should try it. Then I, I did a couple of things. I said, I, I'm interested into the old movies. So that got to spark my interest. Then I started reading about different Bill Bojangles Robinson and different other people, not knowing that I would run into them. And I was trying to do for tap dancing at that time, but they had tap schools that was like 
you know, the little winky dinks in it. You know. I said, that's cute, it's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> One day, there's a place called the Cultural Center, and it's this guy working there, the Inner City Cultural Center, and he said, you need to go meet this guy. A friend of mine named Angela McIntosh, she said, I bet he can answer all your questions you've been looking for. And I, was, I was on my bicycle right around, and I said, I went to this place, it was closed, it was closed. I'm bailing on the door, I'm gonna meet this, ah! So I ride my bike back, and on the corner, this guy had a flat tire. He couldn't put the tire in. I said, oh my God, nobody's helping them. Cars are going by. I said, let me help this guy out. Hey, need some help? Yeah, 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 help me. And I'm putting it, he looks on my handlebars and he sees on my handlebars my tap shoes. He said, you're a hoofer. I said, what? You're a hooker. I said, I thought he was calling me a hooker. <laughs> but I, 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 I said, well, um, he said, he said uh, um, no, it mean, that means dancer. I said, oh, really? Okay. He said, I dance, I tap dance. I said, yeah, sure, I'm a bit. He ain't helping me with the tire, I'm a bit. He said, yeah, I dance in many shows and stuff. I said, you want to know something? Here's my card. I said, I took it. He said, yeah, yeah, okay, sure, sure. Got him on his way. Did my good day for the day, and I'm gone. Gone. So two weeks go by, I'm, I'm still getting frustrated, trying to find this art dance. Comes in, my mother said, you know what, you're getting frustrated. Why don't you take that man's offer up? I said, okay. Went over to his house, knocked on the door. It was like those, you know, scary movies. He knocked on the door, and then I go, ooh, ooh, the door. <laughs> I said, oh, you finally made it. Like he, got, he knew I was coming, I said, Okay. <laughs> I walk in, he said, he walk in the living room, grab the rug, whoo, show me what you got. So I said, okay, stand back. I'm dangerous. I'm gonna show this cat what I know. I get out there. <laughs> He looked at me, I looked at him. <laughs> he looked at me, I looked at the floor. Then I said, mine doesn't look like that. Huh, watch this. Try this. And he got up there. I said, wow. Mine don't look like that. <laughs> then he said, you want it badly. He said, you got to come at it and you got to really study it. So at that time, you got to realize the swing era, the tap era was laid down. A lot of people said it was died and it didn't go. No, it, w it was dormant. dormant. It was not dead. I wouldn't say it was dead. It was dormant. Just waiting for certain people to uh, uh, make me back. So I worked with this gentleman. Uh, and come to find out, this was the guy that I was trying to find. <laughs> I couldn't find him, I found him. But through him, I worked in him, we worked seven hours, seven o'clock to two o'clock in the morning, dancing. He had numerous people who would come into class and I look at their faces, I said, I know who these guys are, but I couldn't pinpoint it. And it was every Wednesday night, he gave me, he gave me a first job and I would work all these, and then I would meet all these incredible people, but I was trying to pinpoint it. And then late at night, and you guys have to understand during that period of time, mm -hmm late 60s and in the 70s, not many Afro-American um, performers were on television or so. Not that you wait um, late at night to see these performers or in, in a movie. And so um, late at night, about two in the morning, it was just great. And I'm going like, it's an all black cast. I'm going, What's, who are black people on TV? What? what is it? And they're all singing and they're dancing. And I said, that's that guy that worked with Shirley Temple. Oh, there's the Heidi Heidi Ho guy. I said, oh, there's Fast Water. Oh, 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 you know. But at the end of the movie, these two guys come jumping over each other, doing splits, going, oh my God, who are these guys? It's crazy. 
The next day I tell my friends, did you guys see that movie last night? What are you talking about? All these black people singing and dancing. My friend said, there ain't no black people on TV. What? No, no, no there ain't no black people on TV, Chester. Man, no, I'm trying to tell you, I saw that. I saw black people. <laughs> they didn't believe me. So I went back, my teacher said, something's bothering you, what's wrong? I saw this movie and nobody seemed to see it except myself. I know I didn't dream it, but I saw it. Well, and I explained it to him, that these guys, and he said, wait a minute. He pulled out some eight by tens. You guys know, don't, some of you guys might not know what eight by tens, you're, you're that digital age. <laughs> he got up the pictures and go, whoop, whoop, whoop. look at that, is this it? I got him, oh yeah, that's a Heidi Ho guy, and there's that, 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 that Bill Robinson guy, and then I got, oh, that's you. <laughs> and come to find out, that was Fayard Nicholas of the Nicholas Brothers. And that's how I've been with, I was with him for over two years dancing and did not know anything. Cause you know, cause we, we hung out, not just as, um, no, you know, we didn't hang out just as student and pupil dance and just go away. No, we, I mean, we hung out. We went to the movies, went out to the zone, so we went out to hang out, you know, you know, we argued, we did stuff like these guys do. But anyhow, but, <laughs> but I'm just saying, the rapport and, and the information that he gave me that I sat down, and he said, I want you to learn from my, some of, uh, from my friends. And he, they're, they're the people, he was my main mentor. Then he, I was like the pass around kid, throw around, throw around, throw around. He left me to Clarence Landry, the Hi Hatters. These are names of jazz greats, the Hi Hatters. Uh, Esben Mosby, the creator of the dance called the Peckin. They were the first uh, Afro-American uh, jazz uh, trio that went to China and introduced jazz to China, besides Buck Clayton with the, with the Count Basie Orchestra. Uh, Francis Neely, I learned chorus girls dance that strip, tap dancing. Then later on I went to Afro-Cuban and worked with Carlos Fluche. I worked with him. My first Lindy experience instructor dancer was Archie Savage. I worked with Archie and then he learned the style of Archie and part of Maria Bryan. Uh, I got a list of my tell you, of Warren Berry of the Berry Brothers. Uh, Arthur Duncan, which we just lost about uh, a month ago, the famous. Uh, I had Chuck Green, Buddy Briggs. Um, I mean, I could tell you groups and the stuff that I was like in. And fortunately, some of the stuff, the videos, I, that, that me being a filmmaker, um, I gathered them on VHS, their old films, but I got them. I got them on film. Like that gold. There been people said, why do you keep shooting film? Why do you keep shooting? I said, you don't know what's going to be a great moment. You just don't know. And now those films are uh, proof. I show people, look, there's, there's John Bubbles. I lived with him uh, eight years, took care of him, uh, you know, his life. Uh, and I learned how to put um, productions together. Leonard Reed, <laughs> the great the creator of the Shim Sham, and Willie Bryan. So from each one of these people, I, um, I gathered a lot of stuff, you know, knowledge, how to put the dance together. Oh, how do you do a gag? How do you put a uh, show together? And um, now the resurgence of swing comes back. And that was great, harangue. You know, you have, you got London, you got Germany, all these people, and it's now resurgent. And uh, you, gotta, you guys don't understand. Uh, I was doing it 15 years before resurgence. <laughs> and I was like, there gotta be some more people out there, damn. <laughs> you know, I met Norma in 77, because I was doing film work and I did a television show, it was called The Richard Pryor Show, a comedian. And um, I was a gaffer. They said, you know who that lady is? I said, she's a funny as hell. I don't know who she is, she's funny. <laughs> they said, that's Norma Miller. I said, wait a minute, the dancer? There you are. I said, you got me. And we talked and we had fun and Norma said, I heard you tap dance. She's looking at me like, I mean, real, real hardcore, you know. But I loved it, you know. And then we didn't meet again until, what's that place you guys at? The Cat Club? Yeah. 
Yeah. The, that's when I came into the cat club. That was my first time when I had my first dance company. Uh, we, I had the first vernacular Afro-American dance company that did uh, vernacular dance around the world. My first tour, and got back, and then I got stranded. And that's why I went to New York and ran into the, to the cat club. And then from the cat club, I ran into I was at Leonard and everybody else. And so everything was going in full circle. I'm gathering and seeing these other people that were um, dancers, you know. You know, and I remember Marcus and uh, Marcus and Barbara was uh, at her ring. <laughs> I know you guys look, used to look at me like, this guy is crazy. <laughs> you know, they, 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 I know Barbara looked like this. She was like, there's something wrong with him. <laughs> I know there's something wrong. Because, but they would do, they would do what I tell them to do. We would make movies. And did you know Marcus, what I could probably say, he was one of my actors in one of my movies. <laughs> he, was Z- he was Zorro. Yes. That's and, true. And he had to sit he, and he fenced and he tap danced at the same time. <laughs> All right. But we would do crazy stuff. Everyone but, has something in the vault, you know. In the vault, yeah. <laughs> But this is the swing world, and these are the people uh, that are definitely I admire them because it was like, like he said, it's like it's family, it's a whole family. And you guys are a community. We yeah. met. Um, we were, We were. We went. Bob and I went to. Um, we went to London, mm-hmm. and Norman Miller was on the same show. It was a dance festival like this weekend for Terry Monahan. And, uh, hi, Norma. Hello. <laughs> Just walk away, you know, one of those things. And so when we had to talk, we started having talks, and she'd hear things about us. She'd look down, you know, when you sit like this, and she, Barbara would say something, she'd look, and I would say something, she you was where? And later on, she said, you were in such, such a place? I said, yeah. And she asked Barbara, you were in such a place? Yeah. She asked me, you danced with so-and-so? Yeah. She said, he was one of my dancers. I said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, uh, remember Red, Red Fox Club on La Cienica in oh. uh, Hollywood? Yes, she said, yeah. I said, I was there when he made you a comedian. He said, shh. <laughs> you know what really? she said? <laughs> she said, I knew I'd seen y'all someplace, but I didn't know where. But she didn't know we was there with her. Oh, yeah. At that yeah. place. And we, was, we were booked there. That show was, we ran for, for three months. Every night, packed house and and then they uh, assassinated Martin Luther King, and that's what killed our gig. Mm-hmm. But that's where he made her a comedian. That's right. She didn't dance or nothing like that. She was just a comedian. Yeah. And we had a great show. We had a great show. The stars was coming out every night to see the show. We yeah. went there for three weeks, and we stayed three months. Three months, yeah. yeah. Someone had learned the rocks. <laughs> I forgot about the show. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's so amazing to know these stories. That's, that's right. Yeah. That was, that's where all the comedians were. Yeah. The name of the club was Red yeah. Fox. Red Fox. And I remember when we met Norma the first time, it was in 1992. We drove to Vegas, and it was actually, we met her at 3 a.m. in the morning after she finished her show, because she had a show in Vegas. and. Then we went out for food and got the first time where we met Norma Miller. Oh, hardcore. Ah. hardcore. I know, I think we should, next year we should extend Rock the Swing for another week just for the talk. <laughs> <laughs> and it's necessary, it's so interesting. Uh, but we have to close down very shortly because the band has to rehearse. But I want to give you also... start to a court after. Yeah, this is why. But this is why I'm now asking for questions. Yes. Ah. Yeah, speak up, speak up. I know the game, I know the game. Yeah, I'm in control of it. <laughs> if you have a question, bring it out now. But bring it out. Isaac. 